Good morning, guys. It's Kelly and Crystal. How are you guys today? I hope you're having a great Tuesday. Good morning from the South. Um, <laughs> so I am Crystal from the Dallas Mom Blog, Crystal and Comp .com. And uh, each week, Kelly and I, Kelly Miller, and I come to you with a new Learn to Blog topic for free right here on Google Plus. And all of the videos go to our YouTube channel. So you can always go and check them out there. I ho we host alternate weeks, so the videos are either on my channel or her channel. And you can also go to learntoblog.hangouts.com and see the collection of our videos there as well. So if you're a new blogger or a seasoned blogger or just a blogger wanting to take it to the next level with your blog, needing some refreshing, can't afford to attend some conferences, this is a great place to get current information um, for your blog. So. Kelly Miller, you want to introduce yourself, Mama? Hi, guys. I'm Kelly Miller. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just see you. I don't see me. Well, I um okay. Once I click your box, then I have to manually go back and forth. But I had it where you click my box, then just unclick it. I know, but that doesn't always work. Okay. Anyway, so I'm Kelly, and I blog at threeboysandadog.com. I've been blogging since November 2006. I blog about homeschooling and homemaking tips for busy folks. I do lots of printables and um, other fun things. So I'm excited about our our medley, motley, whatever of topics today because they are things that have come up in the past. And, and Crystal had somebody email her and ask um, for these things. So we're going to cover them today, and we're going to talk about our newest class coming up. So that's us. Let's yeah. Go. So we're ready to get started. And if you have additional questions, just leave those in the event page. I set up this event wrong. So um, we will just, I think that there's essentially two different areas that you can leave comments, but I think we've managed a way around it all. So maybe you don't even see that it's set up wrong. I don't know. I'm having a crazy day. <laughs> but just leave your comments in either place wherever you got the invitation and we will be checking for your questions. And if there's anything you want us to expand on on the topics that we're talking about today, we will happily do so. And if you have other topics that you want to talk about coming up, email Kelly or I. We're constantly adding to our list. Um, I do think we have a great photography person that's going to come on and I'm hoping that we can coordinate that for next week um, to talk about photography in your blog. Um, but we are just, Kelly and I, we just have so much. <laughs> Our plates are running over. So, um, all right. So, Kelly, let's get started with, do you want to start with planning for summer? Can you hear me? Yeah. I was waiting on you to get started. Oh, I'm sorry. I switched screens, so I didn't know if I... I guess you were shaking your head yes. Okay. So planning for summer. This was Kelly's idea, and I guess I'm going to start. Um, and here's my, here's my two cents. Target doesn't have summer stuff out yet, so I'm not planning yet. <laughs> but that's a really bad approach. So, um, But you know what? As I sit and think about it, last summer was my first summer that I really um, struggled with traffic. Like each summer before had been um, super easy. Um, there was constant steady growth and last summer I didn't have a lot of growth and I think a couple of things to remember is once your blog gets to a certain point I think it's easier to plateau for a while um, on traffic would you agree Kelly oh absolutely I'm so sick of where I'm at I'm ready to move on right so for Kelly that's happening now for me that happened during a summer season it will happen again and again and again it's something that occurs um, but I was not prepared, I was not as prepared for last summer as I could have been. Um, one thing that I love, you know, some people like to take a break in the summertime because uh, that's when their kids are home from school, they take some family vacations. I want you to think outside the box and start thinking about how you can really optimize on this off time. If you are wanting to take a break but still have steady flows of traffic coming in. Which, yes ma'am? Steady flows of traffic means steady flow of income. Right. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, I could, I'm thinking of, 
I'm thinking of two bloggers. Can you read my mind? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm thinking of um, two bloggers that have done a really good job the last couple of years in doing this. And one of those is Tiffany King from eatathomecooks.com. And what she did last summer was she did, she found a need, which was people cooking in the summer. It's hot. They don't want to heat up their kitchen. And she found a solution, which was cooking in the crock pot so that you didn't heat up your house and it made life easier and it made dinner seem less daunting. So what she did was she spent time before summer planning for this and um, she probably started about this time last year and said I'm going to do 75 days of crock pot recipes. So she found some of her own, she created some new ones, she went to her archives and then she reached out to bloggers and said may I share this on my site. She didn't share the whole recipe, she just said you know, she did an intro that says, this is a great uh, lemon chicken crock pot recipe from crystalandcup.com. She used it this way with her family. It's something that you're going to want to check out and add to your meal plan this summer. She provided one picture and then a link for them to hop over to my site and get the recipe. She did this for 75 days and it was brilliant because she got permission from each blogger that she featured, but that's free advertising for me. Hello, why would I say no to that? And also, it was an easy way for her to have steady traffic and people were invested. People were waiting for the next thing to come through to say, um, you know, here are my dinner solutions for this summer. And it worked beautifully for her. And I, I just thought it was brilliant. I can't tell you how many times I emailed her and I'm like, this was brilliant. So smart. And then another blogger that I know, um, which is, she's known as Nani online. Um, she has a slobcomesclean.com. We've had her on before as well. And last summer, she did, um, she's really involved in the summertime with things at her church and stuff. And so it's a really, and her kids are home from school. So she beat different bloggers so many times a week. So um, she took, so I don't think she had much current content going out at all. And it was just featuring different people like three days a week or whatever. So she reached out to bloggers and said, give me five links from your blog that fit into my niche that I can promote for you that's a solution for moms basically. So you know, if it's meal planning, if it's cleaning, if it's organizing, whatever it is. And I mean, that was a great way for her to partner with other bloggers, build a com you know build her community with bloggers, and provide content to her readers that they wouldn't have typically had, and it worked beautifully. Kelly, what are some ideas that you have for summertime, um, getting starting to plan now for that? Um, well, one thing that I have done every year, I'm not sure I'm doing it this year, but I have done a massive back to school bash. Well, it's been, you know, 30 days of giveaways, and it's just been crazy. So one thing that I've had to do about this time every year is start contacting those companies and getting all those things lined up, you know, whatever it is that I'm doing. <clears throat> um, a few years back, I actually partnered with several other bloggers to do that, so that took a little bit more coordinating. But, I, like, like, all, <laughs> like most people out there, I don't want to spend my summer in front of the computer. I want to, my husband is a teacher, so he's home during the summer too. You know, I want to go on vacations. I want to do different things. And the only way that I can do that is to start now writing extra posts, scheduling extra things, planning whatever it is I'm going to do to have the bulk of my blog posts ready by the time summer hits. I love that. And last year, you did a lot of traveling in the summer. I did a lot. I mean, we went to um, Disney for 15 days. We went to Biloxi, Mississippi. We went to New Orleans. We went to Panama City. We, I mean, we did a lot of traveling. I would come home and turn around and leave again. And it, I didn't have to work. It was very nice. It was very nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, I, you know what, when you said yesterday why don't we talk about planning for summer I'm like oh, that is so why do we need to do but I'm so glad that we're doing it because it really is the reminder that I need that you know in the summertime our life is crazy at my house and um, that's a very busy season for my husband and and he's gone a lot and I mean he's local but his, he works a lot and uh, in the business that he does and so it is, it's a really hard time um, if I'm not, if I don't have my ducks in a row. So 
adding on blogging stuff to that is even more of a challenge. Now we homeschool year round so our school schedule doesn't change um, but I, this is such a reminder that I really there are ways to still have current content on your site throughout the summer without making it a burden and a labor of you know 10 hours a day. So um, I think this was perfect timing, Kelly. You're so you're so ahead of the game. That's what I love of you. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions about summer ideas or planning for summer? Um, Penelope says that she's watching you and I on her big screen TV using her new Chromecast TV player. Love being able to easily stream YouTube. And she hashtag TV stars. <laughs> the oh Kelly Crystal Show. We really need theme music now. We really do. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Um, so guys, do you have any questions? We can come back to your questions if you think of them later. But if you have if you have solutions on how you survive the summer and how you plan ahead for the summer, please share them now. We would love for everybody to be able to learn from that because, I mean, that's what this is all about. We're all here to learn from each other and share our trials and tribulations and successes and and grow together. Um, all right, Miss Kelly, any final thoughts on planning for the summer? Are you ready to move on to the next topic? Well, so I wanted to tell them about our new class. So we haven't pulled all the details together yet, but um, we are going to have a short class, probably two weeks, three weeks maybe, um, helping you walk through your your old analytics if you have them, your old AdSense things if you have it, your old whatever, everything to help you plan and fill out your summer editorial calendar. It will be a paid class. We are planning to keep it at a very low price point and allow quite a few people into it. Um, we will have you know printables and this, that, and the other. So. It's on the agenda. It's coming. Hopefully by next week we will have all the details finalized and have a good sign-up place for you guys and we can go from there. That's very good to know. Um, <laughs> um, also, don't forget that we have our, um, our, class, our fourth round of classes for um, the four-week class where we walk you through utilizing webmaster tools, utilizing um, your analytics, De deciding what your keywords are that you should be focusing on and creating content, amazing content off of all of that. And no matter if you've been blogging for a couple of years or three months, this is a really even, I mean, even if you've been blogging forever and ever and ever, if, if you still, you still learn constantly. We're always learning. Kelly and I are always learning. And it's just a great, um, when we go through the class, there's times that I go and change things on my site again, and I think of new ways to find and create new content, and it's just a really valuable, inspiring class. And we are planning to start our next round on Monday, and got I think we've got two openings still left, so um, we would love to have you guys uh, sign up for that if that's something that you're interested in. Okay, so I guess you and I have some planning for the summer class, Kelly. <laughs> it's all right here. I just need to get it out. Okay, so we have a few questions. Okay. So Alicia wants to know, can you do too many roundups? She says, I've been doing roundups lately and I wonder if it's overkill. There are some bloggers that only do roundups. Their whole blog is nothing but roundups. So I don't know that you can do too many. However, if you completely change the way that you write 100% overnight, it is going to confuse your readers. So if you've all of a sudden started doing roundups and you virtually never did roundups in the past and all you're doing are roundups, it can confuse them. Crystal, what are your thoughts on that? Um, here is what I have to say about that. If you are doing roundups to work on a keyword, so say that um, you're wanting to start getting Google traffic for, I'm just going to throw this out there, ladybug crafts, okay, for people. She's just going to throw that out there. That may be a post I'm working on. Um, anybody is in the Kid Blogger Network. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. We're too funny. Okay. So, say you're working on it. 
<laughs> it's got to be relevant. <laughs> it's got to be relevant. Right? So say hypothetically that you're working on a roundup post for ladybug crest, because that just sounds great for preschoolers. So, so you, this is my, th these are my two cents. This is what I've learned in my journey of doing roundup posts. Right now I have nada. I have zero posts on my site about ladybug crafts. I cannot expect to do a roundup and from one roundup utilizing that keyword once, I cannot expect to get grand results from Google Plus profit wise or traffic wise. It takes more than that. So I, I want you to ask yourself why you're doing this roundup post. If it's for that purpose, well, your purpose may be different. Your purpose just made to provide this content to your readers. Get it. Great. More power to you. But if it's for the purpose of getting more traffic from Google and profitability, I highly suggest that before you post that roundup post that you create your own post. So this week at some point, Matthew and I will be doing a ladybug craft um, of some sort, one or two of them. And then those crafts will be listed in my roundup post and then I can connect the two posts together by linking to each other within those posts. So linking my roundup to my individuals and my individuals to my roundup, if that makes sense. I am so visual. <laughs> so that is what <laughs> you should see a homeschool day here. Um, so that that's my suggestion to you. What are your thoughts on that? No, comment? I agree wholeheartedly. Why are you doing the roundup? Is the roundup because you want to work on your keyword and you have nothing for that keyword? Then it could be overkill. Um, if you have, if you're writing a post and you cannot link from that post, if you're writing a long list of links and none of those links are yours, all you're doing is creating a bounce, a higher bounce rate. Right. Because you've got this long list of reasons for people to leave your site. If you can mix into that list your own links, then not only are you giving your readers good content and and lots of different things to look at, but you're also giving them links to stay on your site. I, you just have to weigh it. What's your reason? What's your reason? What do you want out of that post? If it's strictly for Pinterest traffic because roundups do awesome on Pinterest, hey, have at it. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, so it really is. I mean, a lot of times the choices that we make, the bottom line is, you know, goes back to what is your reason for doing this. So um, that's that's perfect. That's exactly right. Um, let's see here. What else do we have? Um, summer sassy. Oh, go I was going. I was trying to catch up through all the questions. Go ahead. Have some that I don't see. Well, I I was scrolling from the top down, so you go oh, ahead. I'm from the bottom up. <laughs> I'm starting at the beginning. Crystal's starting at the end. Cassie, you know said, what? Read a book. I have the last chapter first. Go ahead. Oh my gosh, my brother <laughs> does that. Drives me nuts. I'm like, what's the point of reading the book? Because now you know what happened. So Cassie says that she already has her plans for part of her summer. She's doing the same thing that she did, or something similar that she did last year with some summer learning printables. Awesome. I love summer, summer learning printables. Brainpower Boy says that she loves the idea of highlighting other bloggers. Um, she's basically been doing that and she's gotten no response at all. She says she's reached out through contact forms and email. Are there any other, are there any tips for other ways to try this? I don't know about everybody, but I know myself. I am drowning, like literally drowning. I spend, I will take an entire day to work on email and spend the entire day working on email and I will make it through three to 4,000 emails and still have 10,000 sitting there. I, I can't dig out. I can't be the only one. I'm missing things left and right. People are like, I've emailed you several times and I just can't get you. So I can't be the only one. I don't know what's happening out there in the, in the blogging world, but PR folks, spam even and I just can't even find the regular stuff because of all the junk. It's it's a mess. So, you know, give it a week or two and try again. Hey, I just wanted to touch base with you. What are your ideas, Crystal? Well, um, 
Sorry, I'm a little sidetracked. The question relates to finding content, whether it's for people contributing or for roundups or whatever. That's the question, right? No, she's wanting to do the highlighting other bloggers' interesting posts for summer, but she's been reaching out to people and not getting a response. What are okay, her so what way, do it? one way you can do that is um, I would... I would start getting involved in Facebook communities that are specific to your Plus communities. Or Google Plus, exactly. So, um, for example, if you do if you write about kid stuff, kid blogger activity things, um, then I would join the Kid Blogger Network, which is run by Jamie. I can't remember her last name. She runs Hands On As We Grow. Um, I believe she's the one that runs that community. I could be. Um, but it's a great group of people, and you can easily go in there and you know, and ask for posts. You can ask for I'm looking for guest bloggers. I'm looking for this or that. Um, those are the kind of things that I would start doing. I would reach out to my tribe. If you don't have a tribe, then that's not an option. But I would I, I would reach out to them. And it does get um, it does get old emailing people individually, using contact forms. I agree, that totally gets old. So I would really try to focus on groups, um, getting involved in groups um, that are uh, specific to your niche so that you can utilize those people um, for the resources that they have to offer. That's what I would do. Um, okay, what's the next question, Kelly? So Summer says, if we applied for the class, will we hear back yes or no if we made it? Yes, we are working on that this afternoon and tomorrow. So you'll hear something probably tomorrow. Yes. Alicia says she's not doing all roundups, just about once a week. So I think you're fine. If you notice that they're not getting the traffic anymore that they used to, then you know it's time to stop and move on to something else and maybe you know revisit it later. Teresa, where's the link to your site for signups? I just put it up there. So um, it's the learn to blog, learn to blog hangouts.com, whatever. It's right up there. <laughs> and I did it too. Sorry. Oops. <laughs> Next question. Yeah, Becky says as far as keywords go, when you find a new keyword and to start and decide to start hitting it. What is the number of monthly searches that you try to have, making it a good one? I'd love to hear your thoughts on keywords. I know how to use them, just not sure what kind of search number is a good one to go for. Okay. Um, are you saying that when you've used a tool to research it, you... I, I want to make sure I understand the question correctly. Are you saying your final results are, I mean, 60 hits a month? Is that a good number? Um, really, every word has a different demand. So, or every keyword phrase has a different demand. So, that's a word that only gets 60 hits a month as it is, and you're getting 55 of them. You're doing good. Um, and that's where I think she we, says a new one. When she finds a new one and decides to start hitting it, so when she finds a new one and uses a keyword tool to find this keyword that she wants to start using, what should she look for number-wise in the tool? See what I'm saying? So like when she's utilizing her, um, okay, well, I, what I do is, uh, Kelly, why don't you go first and I'll, then I'll say what I do. Okay, so it depends on what I'm working on. If I am working on a generic word, okay, so for example, my, all of my seasonal pages that, I, um, that I've been working on this whole year, all of those are this, the past 12, 9, whatever months, I really want a lot of searches. To be quite honest, I don't even care what the searches are because the main keyword is Easter or Easter activities. Well, it's going to have a ridiculous number of people trying to rank for that. So I don't so much worry about that one. So when I do a preschool, Easter preschool printable, I want to figure out what's the best wording for me. And I don't care if it has 30 searches and nobody is, is writing about that. I don't care if it has 10 searches if nobody's writing about it. 
So the more people that are writing about it, the more searches that I want. And the reason I say I don't care is because I know I'm doing 10 Easter printables. So if all 10 of them get, three, get 30 people to them, then that's 300 people right there just to those Easter preschool printables. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If it's something that I know I'm doing forever, I'm doing a lot of, and I will continuously change the wording on them because I continuously do them, I don't look for so high of the searches because I want to be on page one for the people that do search it. I don't want to... Right. What do you say, Crystal? Well, I, I handle keywords a little differently. I... Um, I go into my webmaster tools and I just sort by impression or I, I sort my list by what's getting the most impressions and really you know I did a letter of the week alphabet craft for a for 26 weeks new craft every week and actually I had a contributor do it and I've told you all about that before and um, from that I have gotten tons of traffic that like a hodgepodge of traffic that is people looking for letter B activities, letter L crafts. Like it tells me specific keywords that people are using to search. Yeah, this is inside of Webmaster Tools. This is after she's already gone for her new keyword through a keyword tool finder. So this is after right. she's realized, okay, I'm starting to get traffic for letter of the week the mm -hmm. things that I did for Letter of the Week. Okay, go ahead. So, I mean, really, that's how I use keywords. I'm constantly paying attention to my webmaster tools. I'm taking the keyword suggestions based on the impressions and clicks that I'm getting that are based off of the work I've already done. Um, and and then also, like when I have a new word, the other day I, I cleaned my microwave and with vinegar and water and wanted to post about it and so I use a keyword tool and I just go in and put in a couple of words and sit there and figure out exactly which combination of those words I want to use and if I'm going for profitability or if I'm going for traffic that's kind of where I focus in on I, I really think that Kelly's advice is probably the best the better advice to take um, when working on keywords because I I mean, really, I guess I'm overly deliberate, and I'm really bad about putting all my eggs in one basket. Kelly tells me all the time, stop focusing on this one thing and focus on many things. I will tell you that when you decide to work on a keyword, the best results I've seen is when you write about it once a week. So I get into these great routines where, you know, one of the keyword combinations I'm working on is handwriting for preschoolers. That's not that it's a form of the keyword. Um, and so when I go in and write about it once a week and have a new activity to share, teaching people different things to do with their preschooler to teach handwriting or teach their name or whatever, I get, I see my webmaster tools within the next month have a, have a direct positive impact for that word. Um, but whenever I just sporadically, like once every three months, share a new preschool handwriting activity, then it's more, I, I don't get the traffic results. Does that make sense? That's really kind of all over the place. But I, at the end of the day, I think Kelly is definitely, um, I, I would follow her lead on how she does her keywords for sure. That's, that's my two cents. <laughs> Kelly's the expert there. I do it, I just do it differently. And it, it, I mean, it works decently for me. So, but I mean, I do it that way too. I think the whole thing is, I don't think that we are, I don't think she was talking about how do you move forward with a keyword that you're already getting traffic for. I think it was how do you start getting traffic for a brand new keyword? How do you decide on what that brand spanking new keyword is? So like when you first decided to do letter of the week crafts, how did you decide to do that? What searches? And I think we covered that. I mean, I, I think we did. Me and Crystal are very all the way around our elbows to get to our noses kind of people. <laughs> That's why our hangouts are so long. <laughs> well, and creating when I'm creating content, like 
so I had to make homemade laundry soap a long time ago and I did that and it did really well and then I found another version and wrote about that one and then I made homemade dishwashing tabs and I wrote about that one and so once I did that I realized wait a minute from here I can really I'm always thinking of how can I take all of this and turning it turn it into a landing page turn it into roundups refer people to relevant content based off of this that's what I'm always thinking when I'm creating content so in this you know this past week when I'm like I need to clean my microwave I might as well show people how disgusting it is and how I do it and so then I know at the end of the day that that's something that I can build on and have you know a collection of either DIY house cleaning stuff or homemade house cleaning stuff whatever um, that's just how my brain works and it's probably not the most successful so <laughs> but it's working for me so I just keep doing it um, and Becky says I think both ways from you are great finding them testing them and then using the webmaster tools to build it yeah I def you really 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 need to keep a good eye at least once a week checking your webmaster tools to see um, and and kind of keeping, keeping a note tracking of that because it only goes back three months so right now I can't even see what was good at Christmas I better hope that I wrote that stuff down and I did so um, yeah that's Arlene says I need to find or buy a keyword tool program I hate AdWord tools you want to talk about that Kelly I use brainstorm it it's a $299 program and then you also have to buy credits so and you also have to buy credits yep so every search so that costs on top of purchasing the program. Mm -hmm. That's the one I use. But it's a really good mm -hmm. It's a really, really good program because you can search, you can see exactly how many people are, the supply and demand for every word, the profitability possibilities, that's a mouthful. Um, it's, a, it's a really awesome tool. Do they have an affiliate program, Kelly? Yeah, but I'm not an affiliate. You don't do it. Okay. Another it's, it's a good thing to fill out. I tried to. I started to, and then I was like, <sighs> to fill out this long form. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Emily said that she would love to attend our class, but her blog was just born February first. Would she be able to attend? If you want to check out our blog, we can. Um, and she says that we rock, so that's really cool. Um, but the reason we say three months is because you want to have three months of information the master tools so if your blog is not three months old then it may be more difficult to kind of get a feel for what Google's identified you as being the expert for writing on um, we have had one other attendee do our class that her blog was right there where yours is like almost three months um, and we were able to help her a lot and in some senses it was great because she was able to miss a lot of the she, she instead of spending a year writing about things that she thought she should be writing about she kinda knew pretty much out of the gate you know she was right there before the three month period but she was able to very quickly say um, this is what I should be writing about and this is what Google's starting to see me as an expert in and just take it from there the only thing is you're just not gonna have tons of data so Kelly, what's your two cents? But I say if she's right there on the edge, it's kind of up to her if she thinks it's going to be worth her her investment. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's up to you. I mean, it depends on how often. I think if you're only writing about once a week, I think I would wait. If you're writing wow. seven days a week, two, even even if you're just writing once each day or more than that, then you have more content. So yeah, I think that's that's a decision you're gonna have to make. It's a big investment, and I I would hate for you to invest in it, and then realize you know another few months down the road you really have to do it again because your blog wasn't ready. While you learned stuff, you just weren't able to implement as much. And I just don't know without seeing your site and how much content you have there. So mm -hmm. um, I've lost my. Oh, Did you lose your train of thought? No, 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 not my train of thought, Ma. Oh, Diana, okay, so Sherry Lynn says if anybody has not taken Kelly Miller and Crystal Van Tassel's class, it is fabulous, very relevant, and useful. Diana Kennedy says that Kelly Miller needs to watch our email hangout. 
I just can't get out. No matter how much I try, as soon as I delete 100, I have 150 new ones. So it's just this constant uphill battle, and I'm getting, I'm ready to just hit delete on everything. Okay, so Diana says, with a roundup, when you link to yourself, do you have the link open in the same window or separate? Okay, we've covered this before. You guys write this down, put it on a sticky, put it by your computer, tell everybody you know. When you link within, keep it in. So when you link in your same, in your site, you want it to stay right there. You do not want a new window or a new tab or anything like that. Link within, keep it in. Link without, keep it out. So when you link to somewhere else, it needs to open a whole new window. Link within, keep it in. Link without, link it out. Keep it out. Keep that, like... What? <laughs> Crystal, why are you nodding your head? <laughs> I'm just thinking of you. You're so funny. You're like, oh, you crack me up. Well, that's how you know. Come on. Link it in, keep it in. Yeah, we teach our kids things with like little rhymes and songs and whatever, you know. Look, mm -hmm. eight seven. Wait, you're five, so six, funny. Seven, eight. Fifty-six equals seven times eight. Five, six, seven, eight. It's how you remember stuff? Whatever. I don't know. Just link, <laughs> link within, keep it in. Link without, keep it out. There you go. Did you make that up? I did. I'm smart, huh? You made that up the day that you made it Pentopolis or whatever. Pentocalypse. Pen pen Pentocalypse. Yeah, pen <laughs> I always want to say Pentecostal. I always want to say Pentecostal. I don't know why. Like, it just gets all messed up in my mouth. Okay. Um, Cindy says she needs to learn about Webmaster Tools. We did a hangout on that. Diana Kennedy Actually. says, will you leave me information about the Google Plus communities for bloggers? I'm in the Facebook groups. We would rather have that interaction over on Google Plus. I'm not in any, uh, but I just feel sure there have to be some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I don't even know who to tell you to get in touch with for Google Plus. Kelly uh, Dixon or, or Megan Schakowsky could probably point you in the right direction. They're big Google Plus people. Yeah. Uh, Miami Mommy Savings says, if you've never done a summer feature series, what will be your advice on starting one this month? Well, I can't answer your focus question. Um, that is something that you, I was pulling up your blog. No, I'm sorry. I don't mean that. I'm just like, well, I can't open your That question. is, what solution? <laughs> no. I can't help you focus, Mama. No, that's not what I'm meaning. Like, I, no. What I'm saying is, I can't. That is you. That is your passion. What is it that you want to provide to moms? It looks like your site is about saving. So, um, is that what you want to carry your focus over on for the summer? And, you know, maybe um, maybe you write about, I'm going through your site quickly, but I, um, maybe you want to find people, like, you could do it via guest post, or you could do it via featuring people. Um, just kind of decide how you want to do it, but maybe you have one person come a week and share a way of a craft to do with your kids that's free or that's only using things that you have on hand at home. I don't know if that would be a natural thing from your site. It looks like you write about savings, but um, is that something that your readers are going to be like, whoa, where did this come from? So if that's not it, then maybe it's focusing on how different ways to clean using products that you have. You know, you find these lists that say, 30 ways to use vinegar to clean your house. Well, turn that into a daily thing and then hashtag it so that people are talking about it. Find ways to generate buzz about it and then show people, here's how today we're going to use vinegar to clean the soap scum in the shower. Today we're going to use vinegar to, to clean the microwave. Today, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like figure out what's valuable, what's going to be valuable to your readers. It's a natural fit for your blog. Is it something that you want to reach out to others and have them come on your site and present? Or is this something that you want to present to them by way of your own blog post, you know, your own creation? That's how I kind of, those are the things that you need to decide to help you go to the next place with planning. What do you say, Kelly? Yeah, I like your ideas. You could also, um, you could also think outside the box. So you're about saving but what, what's better than saving money? Making money, right? So how can 
how can they make money over the summer? Can they go through their clothes from last year and sell them on eBay or repurpose them into purses and you know long skirts into short skirts and sell those? What can they do? Maybe each day have a new idea on how they can make money. Um, I mean, I, like Crystal said, we don't know. <laughs> you need to go through your webmaster tools and see what's working for you and, and decide how can you take one of those and turn them into a series. And what do you need to do? Make yourself a list. What do I need to do to make this series come to fruition? What blog ideas do I have? What post ideas do I have? Are there companies that I need to contact? Do I want guest posters to come in and do things about this topic? Do I need to do interviews for this topic? Am I doing giveaways? If so, am I wanting other bloggers to work with me on giveaways? What bloggers do I want to work with me? How do I need to contact those? Make your entire list and start at the top and work your way down. Mm -hmm. Very good suggestions. Okay, Kelly, we have 20 minutes. Actually, I think we have 18 minutes. No, yeah, something like that. And um, we still need to cover two more topics. We need to cover contributors on your blog and um, dealing with negativity. So, you want to talk about that? Um, Amber says, I don't use these as much as I should, but I'm in these Google Plus communities. Bloggers Alliance, Next Level Blogger Q&A, and Mom, oh yeah, Mom Blogged Money Blog. I'm in that one too. Mom Blogged Money Blog. So, y'all look there. There's a couple links to different communities. Good job. Thanks, Amber. Alyssa says, Alicia says, we have a strange echo, echo, echo. Do you hear it, hear it, hear it? Oh, stop it. <laughs> You're out of control. Okay, let's talk about contributors. <laughs> I don't care, negativity. I don't care what we're covering. Just cover something. You're so funny. Okay, so let, let's talk about contributors then. So dealing with contributors, um, a couple, I don't know, like six months ago or so. No, it was when we had on that man, Gareth Mark, Mark Gareth, I always say it wrong. And he was talking about um, Google authorship. And he said that you should not guest post on anyone's site if they're not willing to give you Google authorship. And part of giving you Google authorship requires them making you a contributor. So from that moment on, I guess it's been almost a year ago, I have taken that to heart and I don't just accept random guest posts. And it really made me sit down and say, hey, okay, so this means my guest posts, it made me be more committed to ensuring that they were that they were connected to my topper within my niche. Um, and it made me say, um, it made me create a, a guest post policy, and which we've talked about that as well in Hangouts before. So, um, that's that's how I handle contributors. If somebody comes to me and says they want to do a guest post, I refer them to my guest post policy, and then I say being a guest poster means that you're becoming a contributor. And so then I, you know, as long as we they agree to my terms, and as long as I am happy with, um, you know, if they seem like a trustworthy person, I like their blog. They're just not some fly by night then we engage in that relationship and I make them a contributor and even though they may only guest post once now I know that you know in a month from now or this summer when we're traveling or whatever which we're not traveling but I'm just giving you random ideas or examples I can go back to that list of contributors and say hey it's been a while since you contributed something would you like to share an easy summer recipe or an easy summer kids activity or whatever so I kind of have this group of bloggers that I can go to to get those ideas for planning for summer or for the series that I want to do or for the time that I'm taking off, etc. That is how I utilize contributors. That's the extent of it and that's that's it in a nutshell for me. How do you do it, Kelly? I think um, I've had this 30-day um, family game night series and it's been a mess. We've um, our host has had to put a second level of security on our site and all of my contributors can't get in and I've given them the password but by the time they see the password they've already tried it with the other password and so it locks them out. It's been a mess. It's been such a mess. So I've had to go in. So even with that, even with the mess and the, the double security and not being able to get past that, 
I've still gone in and created a user ID for them. They're still contribute and a, they're still a contributor, and I'm going in and putting their guest post in as them. So even with all the hoopla, it still looks like they posted it. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's how I do it too. I, I don't worry so much about it. If you don't make them an administrator, they can't do anything. You're making them an editor. Actually, I make them an author. Mm -hmm. I make my can child they, makes. Can they still? Huh? Can they still upload pictures? Well, I think that in, on my site, this is the way it used to be. I don't know if it still is, but if I didn't make them an editor, then they couldn't. They couldn't upload media. Yeah, they have to do it. Do you have, have HTML? They have to write HTML. So if it's not somebody that I already have a very close relationship with, I make them an author. They can only see their own posts. They cannot see anybody else's. They cannot edit or delete any of the posts. If it is somebody that I have a close relationship with, I make them an editor. But the editors can go in and delete all the other posts. They can go in and change every single post to say, go check out crystalandcomp.com and nothing else. So if, so if it's not someone I have a, a relationship with already, then yeah, I make them an author. That's it, in a nutshell, just like Crystal said. So, so let me ask you this. So if they are doing, um, if they have to do HTML, then that means that they have to prepare the blog on their site and have the images stored on their server and then copy the HTML and paste it into your site. You don't have a problem with that? No. Okay, just checking. That's good to know. These are real questions I would call Kelly and ask her. <laughs> that's a that's a really because honestly, um, I that would keep me from from um, making someone have to do just straight HTML because I don't want the images on their server and having to load. Doesn't that slow down the load time? No. And doesn't that mess up the the um, when Google's scanning your site, it's reading the HTML and it's seeing that that picture is stored somewhere else. Yeah. No biggie? Hasn't been. Okay. Good to know. Interesting. So Sharon right. says that she's nervous about the contributor thing. That she, she always feels really privileged to be able to get into the back end of their blog. I mean, honestly, there's really nothing to be nervous about. Um, it, and it makes it... If you guys can get past that second layer of of um, security. I mean, my blog is obviously very secure because even the people that are supposed to get past it can't get past it. Heck, I couldn't get past it the other day and I had to call my host. I'm like, I can't get through. <laughs> it makes it easier because I don't have all this back and forth. They put it in there. If there's an error, there's a little place where I can go in and, and write, um, please fix XYZ. There's not more email going back and forth. It's all done right inside my dashboard. Good to know. Good information. Yeah, Sherry, I wouldn't be nervous about it. I would only add contributors that you can trust um, and start there and get comfortable with it. And um, yeah, that's to me, just taking those first steps, that'll help you get past it. But honestly, having contributors that you're building a rapport with um, really can be to your advantage, especially when you reach a point where you know that you're going to be out of pocket for a week and you need some guest posts or you need some, you know, a post from other people brought in or you're wanting to do a series. That ties perfectly. Having contributors or managing contributors ties perfectly into what we're talking about for planning for the summer. So um, just take baby steps and try it and, and until you get comfortable. And if you never feel com comfortable, adding contributors in that are just random people that you have no relationship with, then no. that may not be right for you. Don't do it. It's yours. You do it the way you want to do it. Um, all right, Kelly, any more questions? And then we'll talk about negativity. Cassie says she's done it where she makes it on her page, but sends them HTML and the images for the guest post and just tells them where to put the images. Yeah, I've had that too. I've seen that too. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's good too. The only thing is, is I don't, I, I don't know. Kelly's gotten me to wear. I just want it there and done so that, like for example, spaceship laser beams. She's a gal that watches our hangouts all the time, and that's kind of how I've gotten to know her in a sense. I don't know her very well, but you know, we've kind of built a rapport, and she has been guest posting on my site, and it's just, it's beautiful. It works so beautifully. I mean. The post is there, and all the images are uploaded. It's beautiful. It's, oh, it's just so nice. And I know that in May, I'm going to be out for a week and a half or so for my husband's campaign stuff again. So I'm reaching out to people and hoarding some guest posts so that I have them to go live during that week. And that's a blessing. I mean, that's like, that's a huge weight off my shoulders. So, and with a viral tag... You can actually go in and go ahead and schedule the Pinterest stuff for it. So if you go grab your link for a post that's not going live until May 15th, and go to Viral Tag and push your little button, you can schedule those pins on May 15th at whatever time, and they start going out. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, so I want to talk about negativity. And... Um, the person that sent me this idea sent me a list of ideas. Managing contributors and handling negativity were part of that. And um, if you guys have some specific negativity questions that you want to for us to elaborate on, we will do that. But here's how I handle negativity. When someone leaves a negative comment on my post, if all posts are mod all comments are moderated, okay, my blog. So if you the only way you're comment goes live immediately is if your IP address has had approved comments before. So otherwise it gets moderated and that's because I don't want people are con spammers put all that stuff out there you know trying to get links or whatever through and I don't want that and then also for the purpose of negative hateful stuff. If you look at a blog like Pioneer Woman everything is happy and lovely over there okay and you do not see negative posts going, what's negative comments in the posts going whatsoever. I've, I've never seen one. Um, and for me, I think that is perfectly exactly how it should be handled. Because when I'm on her site, I don't go there for negative junk. I go there for inspiration, for cook recipes, whatever it is. I know another blogger who ended up closing down her blog about a year ago, but she was a Christian mom blogger, and I loved what she shared. She was a mom of many, a homeschool mom, but it got to where I didn't like her readers because it was constant negativity. I would get in there and just be like, initially you feel like you need to defend the blogger and be like, why aren't you attacking her? And then you reach a point where you're like, this is bringing me down, and as a reader, it drove me away from her site. So for me, if someone leaves a negative comment, um, I don't post it unless it's something that I think is beneficial to the conversation. So, you know, like right now I have a pending negative comment that says, you know, I made silly putty with borax and somebody's saying, she was, gin she was ginger in the way she said it, but it was negative. And she said, isn't that a poison? Well, I haven't decided if I'm going to post that comment yet or not. Unless I'm on this, I'm searching for other articles that prove um, that it is not something that you need to be concerned about. Um, and I have found some articles. But it's not going to bring value to the conversation. I'm not going to post it because my site will not be a cesspool of negativity. It will not. That is not what it's there for. How do you handle negative comments, Kelly? I don't get any. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Everything is a roses at my site. Yay! No, there's kind of. It depends on it depends on the topic. Um, I've done some topics about how to deal with, you know, kids that are causing issues and teenage anger things, and so those kind of posts. I mean, they're already kind of negative. So I do leave the negativity as long as it's not attacking, because it does it. It causes chatter. Oh, well, I've tried this. Oh, well, I've tried that. Oh, nothing seems to work. So it depends on the negativity. I do leave some, but if it's attacking me, if it's attacking one of my contributors, if it's attacking one of my commenters, no, it's gone. There's negativity, and then there's 
bullying, and I don't leave bullying on my site. Period. And something else you can do, not that I've done this, but if someone leaves a really hateful comment, first of all, people will say things in cyberspace that they will never say to you to your face, ever. And that's a whole other conversation in and of <laughs> itself. Um, so, but this is what I have possibly done. When someone has been really hateful, so say I have this recipe and they come in and they just say the most hateful, no, mean, no. ugly things. Huh? It looks like vomit. <laughs> yeah, somebody said that. Somebody told me that, you know, something was disgusting because I used a box cake mix and I, whatever, whatever. Um, now that stuff just, whatever. I mean, like, my kids need me. I don't need that kind of stuff. Whatever. So, um, I, I have to acknowledge that that person would have never said that to my face. And that person is probably someone that, this is going to sound really unkind and I'm going to say it without it hopefully coming across too unkind but in real life I probably could give a care less about their opinion so you know sometimes we have to acknowledge that you know maybe um, you do a Google search for their email address because they leave their email address when they leave the comment or you track it back to the IP address and you realize once you find this person well that's somebody that I would never relate to anyway because all they do is hate people. Like you just see their Facebook feed and it's all about hate. And I'm not going to lose a wink of sleep at night for that person and what they think because it doesn't, we're not in the same place in life. We're not in the same season. You know, she's the president of the haters club and I don't want anything to do with that. So you just put it into perspective. It's just like when we teach our kids about about bullying and you know we can be cliche and say sticks and stones maybe whatever whatever but um, honestly I've just I don't know I, I've reached a point I, I delete I delete anything that's negative that does not add value to the conversation end of story because it is just this is my one person contacted me and said for my pina colada cake it's my mother's recipe okay and she said you she tells me you need to go in there and change the name of this recipe this is not a pina colada cake it has no pina colada in it how could you know on and on and on and I'm like first off I have half a mind to respond and say oh, okay I'll ask my mother if she would like to change the name of her recipe and then the other part of me is just like who, who cares what this person thinks? She just chewed somebody out for, you know, something else online, too. It doesn't matter. Don't let that, don't even go there. Don't surround yourself with things that are just going to bring you down. It's just not worth it. Don't yeah. you agree, Kelly? Absolutely. Um, Diana Kennedy says, my rule is this. It's my house. Don't come in with dirty shoes. I delete them, especially if it's attacking me or my beliefs. Look, I love that. A lot of you are fairly new at this game. A lot of you that are, are watching this hangout, not all of you, some of you have been at it for a long, long time, but some of you are fairly new. You're going to get them. The, your, your goal as a vlogger is to get more traffic and to get more money. <laughs> and with more traffic and more money comes more trolls, period. They come out of the woodwork. The more traffic you get, the more negativity you're going to face. So, if you want to stick with it, if you want to work, you know, 80 hours a week on your blog to make your blog awesome, or 20 hours a week to make it awesome, whatever it is, if your goal is to is to be known, is to go somewhere and somebody say, oh my gosh, you're Kelly from Three Boys and a Dog. You're going to have to decide how you're going to handle the negativity. And you're going to have to say, I'm not going to let it bother me. These people do not know me. Their main goal in life is to put me down and to put other people like me down. Somebody said, I think it was Crystal. I think Crystal and I had this conversation. You know, what makes a, a superstar or what makes somebody known or notorious in your circles in this little circle right here this learn to vlog hangout circle right here you guys are like it's Kelly and Crystal if I step out of this Google 
hangout, nobody has a clue who I am. So, <laughs> because you guys see us on TV, TV, on hangouts every single week for over a year, you all know who we are. We know who you are because we see your little smiley faces and your comments week after week after week. In this little circle, we are notorious. As soon as we step out of it, we're not. Tom Hanks, people who don't watch movies or TV have no clue who Tom Hanks is. Those that do are like, oh my gosh, it's Tom Hanks. Um, Ricky, my husband said something about somebody he couldn't believe he saw him somewhere. The local, it was the airport or something. He's like, oh my God, I can't believe I saw so-and-so. I'm like, who was that? He said, Kelly, the Major League Baseball player, he's been in blah, 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 blah. I don't know him. So, as you become notorious in your circle, it starts to leak out. Your name starts to leak out to all these, these trolls and these spammers and these horrible commenters. So, just know it's coming and don't let it bother you. And ask yourself right now, what are you blogging for? Because if you're blogging for everyone to love you, you're going to get hurt. If you're blogging because you want everybody to think you're the most amazing cook or the most amazing recipe developer, you're going to get hurt. Because someone is going to tear you apart because people are like that. It's not right. It's not fair. It's not good. But you have to be able to completely separate yourself from that. One time I showed how to clean a dirty car because my car gets disgustingly dirty. And someone came on and said, you filthy American. I can't. And he was from somewhere else. And he's like just putting me down in that way. And I'm thinking, are you serious? Like I am intimately sharing with you my dirty car. And you want to tell me this? And, and you have to quickly realize, that's not what I'm blogging for. I'm blogging to bring value to mother's lives. If I connect with one mom, and if I can if I can help one mom see that she's not alone in her struggles and in her daily you know, d tasks and homeschooling and doing all the things that we do or whatever it is, that's my goal. That's my purpose. I'm here to, to, to help motivate and to help motivate me and to be accountable for me. And, and that's it. That's it. And so... I mean, now it's no big deal. I can easily delete stuff and just think, that's really sad. That's really sad that that's where they are in their life. They must be miserable. And I go on about creating, you know, our cool craft that we're going to do today with my kids. Um, Using and, and that's the boxed cake mix. <laughs> right, exactly. Kids, today we're going to make poison. And red dye number five. <laughs> I mean, really, you can't please. Everybody, you can't. I know that when I do, like when I make something and it has dye in it, there's going to be a group of people that are like, uh-uh, I can't believe that you would give that to your kid, or I can't believe whatever, whatever, whatever. And they may not even read it. They may they may not even realize that was Play-Doh that we made. It wasn't anything that was ingested or whatever. That's fine. What do they say? Opinions are like, what? I mean, come yeah. on. Seriously. Everybody has one. Everybody. So just go on. Do, what is your goal? And you don't have to sit there and make your goal known. Like you don't have to create a mission statement for your blog unless you want to. But you totally can write down on a sticky note what your purpose and drive is for this blog. Stick it on the side of your computer and you look at that every day. And that's your reminder for what you're here to do and why you started this. And when this becomes something that you're no longer passionate about, it's going to become something that you hate doing. And out people can force that to happen to you if you live and don't let it happen. Let this be something that you enjoy because that is when your true creativity will show. All right. Off my soapbox. I'm done. Go ahead, Kelly. Diana says it. She says it best. There's always someone bigger, smarter, more successful, prettier, etc. Be you and be unique and grow thick skin. She didn't say that. I'm adding that. Grow thick skin. Let it roll off. Become a duck. Just let it roll off your back. There's always a better lover and a better fighter. Always. Always. And that's right. Be who you are. Be exactly who you are. All right, guys. So I hope that we answered your questions and we covered some topics that you find useful. Um, 
we're you know we're always eager to take on other questions that you have. So if you think of something related to the topics that we talked about today, just leave those questions over on the event page. If you have ideas for future hangouts, please send those to us. We would be happy to discuss them. And we're hoping to get things squared away so that next week we can um, discuss uh, photography for bloggers. So <laughs> that was my phone. Anyway. All right. You guys have an awesome week. Do something great on your blogs. We'll see you back next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. And y'all have fun. And don't Bye. forget, we're starting our classes Monday. Learn to blog class yep. Monday. What she said. Okay. All right, guys. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.